Okay, welcome back to the um, 802.1x dynamic VLAN assignment uh, validation test uh, well, on the brocade mobility controllers and access points. So now you are looking at the screen for the computer that's running uh, the, D, um, the RADIUS server for our test setup, as well as uh, I'm using the same computer to kind of like um, configure using the GUI and the CLI. Uh, those different devices that I just connected, the FCX, the RFS 7000, 7131 access point. So I just want to go through what I think are the key configuration points that I needed to do to get this 802.1x dynamic VLAN test up and running. So here on the RFS 7000, and remember on the RFS 7000, we only connected just this one Giggy interface on the RFS 7000, which was then connected to port 4 on this FCX. No other connections. I didn't connect any of the other ports. I didn't connect the management interface. So everything is going to come from the controller in and out through that Giggy 1. So I went to the RFS 7000 here, right? And then I went to controller and ports and I looked at this Giggy 1 setting here and, and really you just leave it at default. If you Change anything, just make sure that you set it back to default and make sure that this admin status here is, is set to enable. And if you didn't touch this, it really you don't need to touch it, just leave it as default. And then I went to network, and under network, there's this button here called layer 2 virtual LAN. And under to virtual LAN, again, if you didn't touch these and they're still at default, just leave them at default. But if you think you've touched them or you're not sure, open up the Giggy 1 setting. And just make sure that the mode is set to access. It's not set to trunk. Just make sure it's set to access, which is the default. And the access VLAN is VLAN 1. And this should all be grayed out. And then that's it. That's all you need to do for, v for that Gigi 1 port. Next, you want to make sure that the controller, this controller virtual interfaces, right, is configured so that VLAN 1 here, right, VLAN 1 has been configured with an IP address. And that's how I've been able to manage this RFS 7000 controller remotely through the GUI. Because I gave it an IP address, right? 1.1.1.200, so that I can, you look up here, I can manage it on the GUI when I direct my browser 1.1.1.200. And then make sure, of course, over here that the management interface checkbox is checked, and that will allow you to do it. And that's it, right? So the next thing you want to look at is that the access point, the RFS 7000 access point that I plugged in has been discovered and adopted by this controller. Now, of course, I cheated and I skipped up all those steps that uh, helped me get here, but hopefully this is something you already know how to do and you already have up and running. But after you get it adopted, I'm going to show you one very important step that you need to do to make sure that this test works. Under this access point list here, right, so network here, access point it will take you to this page where you're looking at adopted access point there's a tab here called configuration click on this configuration tab it will list all of your adopted access points now in my case I only have one so I want to click this one here and open it up and edit here right and you there's a there's a section here called VLAN tagging you have to make sure that this checkbox here enable VLAN trunking is checked by default it is not checked so make sure that this box is checked and then just double check that these other settings are still set to the default. Native VLAN ID is set to one, management VLAN ID is set to one, AP native VLAN for LAN one is set to untagged. Not tagged, but untagged. But most importantly, make sure this enable VLAN trunking is checked. It is not by default, please check it. The next thing you want to do is create the wireless LAN that's going to be used for the dynamic VLAN, 802.1x dynamic VLAN assignment. So click on the wireless LAN setting, right? And then you click on this SSID. Now I've already configured here, so let me show you what I configured, right? So I configured an SSID called dynamic VLAN independent. Um, the description honestly doesn't matter, you can put anything you want. And I made sure that this independent mode, AAP only, was checked. By default, it is not checked. If you do not check it, it will perform 802.1x dynamic VLAN assignment on an extended SSID, but you don't want that. You want to do it on an independent SSID, so make sure that this is checked. And then most importantly, make sure this 
dynamic assignment checkbox is checked um, because you want to dynamically assign the VLANs. Next, I click this authentication radio button to make sure it's using 802.1x EEP. I didn't change any of this configuration here. Same thing under encryption, WPA2, CCMP, I made sure that was checked. And then lastly, I went to the bottom here, clicked radius, configured my radius server settings, entered the radius server's IP address, entered the radius shared secret, and that was pretty much it. That is all I needed to do on these settings to get this wireless LAN configured. Now make sure the wireless LAN is enabled here, right? So if it's not enabled, go ahead, you can click, go on down here, click the enabled button if it is not enabled already. And if you just want to double check to make sure that it is turned on, what you want to do is click on access point radios here. And when you click on access point radios, you can look at this um, tab here called WLAN assignments to make sure that this BSSID that I SSID called independent v, uh, dynamic VLAN independent is assigned to uh, whatever radios, in my case, both radios that I want to have using this feature. And that's it. So next, I'm going to show you how to configure the radius server and the client to make sure that this dynamic VLAN assignment test is working.